Hi, I'm Cody. You're watching Cody the Collector, and who's ready for some D and DIY? Today we're going to make a copy of Wormwood's Adventure Arsenal to store your D and D stuff. But before we do, today we're working with power tools. So please, if you work with power tools, have safety as your number one concern. Uh, and one other thing, I am a hobbyist woodworker. I am by no means a professional. So please do not replicate anything that I do in this video. All right, you've been warned. Let's get started. If you wanna build a box, you need some wood. So we're headed to Clark's Hardwood see what we can find. Let's see. Here's what we ended up with. We decided to go with Bacote. Um, this was actually a uh, rough board, so I faced it on three sides. You can see here the rough edge is left. But um, we're down to thickness, and I think it's gonna be a pretty cool uh, piece of wood. I don't know if you can see here, but it's got some nice red accent in there. But yeah, it, uh, it looks great, so. Um, yep, so next step, let us rip it down to dimension. On this part, I use a miter gauge and a stop block to cut the wood to length. Uh, this is an easy way to get uh, repeatable cuts in a quick manner. Here I find the center line for the box to start laying out where I want to mortise the slots. I also will use the back fence as a uh, stop, or basically it will set my depth and I will center the box along the line that I find with the brad point of the Forstner bit. I'm now setting a stop block uh, for quick reference uh, on the center line for the Forstner bit, and it'll give us a high level of repeatability to knock all these out in a quick, quick manner. So here we'll start mortising. The goal is not to cut the complete mortise with the Forstner bit. We just want to create a ledge, something that our router guide can sit against and we'll remove the majority of the wood with the router after this. All right, next we need to cut some rails. Kind of give you an idea of it's scrunched up in there. Let's have a look. Right. 
So this first one, I think we, we can do about four and three quarter. We'll do four and three quarter, four and three quarter. And then on the center one, we're gonna offset it just a bit. And we're gonna, we'll do about, we'll do a four and a half inch rail. So four and a half and two four and three quarters. All right, so I've got two stops now. I've switched out the Forstner bit. Uh, we're sticking with a one inch bit and I've got, <coughs> excuse me, my two stops for the beginning and the end of the rail. And everywhere in between, I'm just gonna punch it out. But these two stops are important um, to make sure all your work pieces are consistent. All right, we'll do a little test fit. See how we did. Yeah. Looks good. All right, we're set up again. Same thing on the, uh, the remaining rails. And while it looks like you have further room over here, you just have to make sure you've got enough room for your magnets. That's already honestly cutting it pretty close. And for the final slot, you leave the fence exactly where it is because you want the same distance between the, uh, you want this same distance here. So again, we just move the, uh, we just move the fences or the stop blocks. All right, we've got our last two stop blocks oriented. Let's get these uh, mortises finished up. All right, here we go. So the uh, next step is to route out these slots. And to do that, I'm going to use this uh, guide on my router. So the lip of this guide 
will ride within these slots. Um, I also have my depth of cut set on my router as well. With these screws here, so it'll only it'll only allow it to plunge so far. This is also around the point where I strongly uh, realized my need for some decent dust collection. All right, here's the uh, test bit. Slots are big enough. And uh, everything matches. It's not, not too thick or anything, so we're good to go. I want to hear a shake at this point because we still have to line these with our neoprene. So next step, get the magnets on. And finally, well, not finally, we need to. Uh, route the edges we'll route us a little um, slot here for a little easier opening and then we'll sand down to at least 300 grit and we'll finish but yeah the hard work hard parts over and now just some of the uh, final touches this is us uh, routing the chamfer on the uh, top and bottom of the box. So from the um, the Forstner bit earlier, actually from the router. So this little portion is where the uh, the guide set. But uh, it's pretty easy to knock this down. If you don't want to use the, uh, you can always go run it back through the drill press again, or um, you can get the trusty old Dremel. And in no time, I'll just run it around the lip, and then you'll be good to go. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'll come back in just a second. Let's start sanding. So my router table had a... Uh, has a screw sticking up too high. We made a pretty significant um, scratch in there. I'm gonna move to a higher grit. I'm gonna sand that out and I'll be back. And the uh, next part is the best part. Here is, in my opinion, the best part. So we're gonna take a portion of cheesecloth and um, use this to apply our finish. We are going to use a, uh, it's like a linseed oil beeswax finish. 
called tried and true this little can is about 22 bucks but it sure goes a long way um, check out what it looks like in there and you honestly the saying is if you have some you have enough <laughs> but you see that's 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 a little that's a little much honestly but uh, let's work it in to our cheesecloth. And this is the best part. You finally get a good look at the, uh, at the grain to see what it's gonna finish up like. Well, it is finishing up, so. You finally get to see what all your hard work went towards. So you, we can, we'll do multiple coats of the tried and true. You apply it. You wipe off excess. You let it settle. And then we'll come behind and burnish with uh, 4-0 steel wool. You can also burnish with just a, uh, a standard rag. Yeah. Oh, yeah.
It's been about an hour since I put the first coat on. We're gonna just uh, burnish real quick with a uh, piece of very fine steel wool. We'll do one more coat and then finishing will be done. Ah, nice and smooth. Let's put our magnets in. So I, I use super glue um, for magnets. There's a lot of, uh, I think, I think um, Wormwood uses uh, the screw-in type. I just buy the standard, uh, the standard, this standard version. Um, they are very strong, but uh, one of the things is you have to make sure that they're oriented properly. So our box goes like this. Match that up open it like that and then we reference these are sticking together like that so I'll like put the faces that were sticking together up put a dab of glue in Just line them in. So here's something. You see how flush that one went in? And how this one is sticking out just a bit? I put a little extra glue into this one. So since the, the fit of that is so tight, the magnet, um, It's not uh, allowing the, uh, it's not the depth of the, the hole. It's actually, there's glue underneath holding it up. So what you can do is get a flat surface and and check this out. So, you see this, see the glue seeping right there? So this wood had a, I can't, I don't have a good light on it. But you see that little crack right there, a little fracture in the grain, oh. That's the extra glue, that's the extra glue escaping through there. So as you push it in, Sometimes you can get a uh, get a, a small clamp. I need, it's not pressing hard. And now the the magnet is nice and flush. We'll quickly wipe off the excess glue. And no worries about the glue seeping through. It'll cure in there as well. Let's see how we did. Nice. Cool. We're 
we're gonna do the inner lining and then we're done. All right, time for the inner lining for the rails. For that, we need some double-sided tape, a cutting edge, um, straight edge, and some neoprene. So first we're gonna start with uh, these circles. And how do we cut a perfect circle? Well, we find something that's around the same size and we cut around it. So our nice Oasis cup from Austin. Uh, let's get to cutting. I was going to um, do some leather and I did not have enough. I've got some really nice full grain leather. Hey, what do you know? Perfecto mundo. All right. So we have two different lengths. These two are the same length, and the center one is a different length. So first off, we're gonna do the outside. We'll find one and then use that as basic stencil for the rest. So for this one, I do have a punch. I'm sure this will shake the camera, so sorry in advance. about four and three quarter. From end to end. we did. Good fit. I do not like, I'll just give this a little, little trim up. So yeah, four and three quarters it. And just like that, they are all cut. Uh, the magic of video editing. All right, so here we go. All of these are sized. Um, but next, we take double-sided tape. Put it on like that. Let's 
So there we go. See, so you get the separation. But uh, we go through uh, two to three pieces per. And you pick which side you like better. This is actually a uh, pretty nice double-sided tape. It's, it sticks quite well with was not a not the most And we are done. So the final test is at hand. Will all of our stuff fit? And can the magnets handle the weights? Oops. So we've also got two sets of Norse Foundry, these metal dice. Oh yeah, I think we're good to go. Hey, hey, not too bad, right? All right, if we shut this and it sits flush, oh yeah, we did it. We did it! Oh, last test, magnet strength. Ooh, I'm nervous, it's heavy. That's pretty good. I'd say, I'd say that's pretty good. Okay. I had to do a little pull, jerk and pull action uh, to get the lid snapped off. But yeah, there we go. All right, the Bacote cost us about 40 bucks. We went from a rough cut wood, we dimensioned it down, we milled the wood, and here we are. So I hope you liked the video. Um, this was pretty fun to make. Uh, as a hobbyist, I don't have a CNC machine where these are cut out quickly, so you kind of have to come up with uh, what tools you have at your disposal versus um, how you can accomplish what you did. I am not an expert uh, woodworker. Like I said, again, I'm a hobbyist. But I think we did a pretty solid job on creating this copy of uh, Wormwood's Adventures Arsenal or Vault or whatever they call it. But yeah, and uh, as far as their design goes, it's pretty awesome. Those guys did a great job <clears throat> in designing this. You can fit a lot of cool stuff in here. Um, we've got three sets of dice. We've got minis. We still have room for this. Other people play game, different games, so you could fill this up with tokens or... <coughs> excuse me uh whatever else you need so uh, but yeah i enjoyed making it had some fun uh hope you liked the video if you would like the video i'd appreciate it subscribe i've got more woodworking uh coming up anyways cody the collector out appreciate it <laughs>